Welcome back to the RTX Bootcamp. So now you have RTX configured for optimized performance. Today we're going to talk about how to build and debug with RTX. So just to recap, this is a three-part video series, and in video one we already configured RTX for optimal performance. In video two, we're going to do some building and debugging with RTX, and this will move you towards building a real-time timer application. So now, to get started with building and debugging with RTX, we'll want to open Visual Studio. So again, on my machine, I have Visual Studio 2010. So go ahead and open it, and you'll get the standard start page. We'll then want to go to File, New, Project, click on that, and then you'll get the Project Wizard from Visual Studio. But if you look, since we have RTX installed, here at the top, you'll see some templates here for C++. And the one we're interested in is RTX application. So we'll go ahead and highlight that. And you'll see here, you have some, some defaults here. We're going to we'll go ahead and want to change the name to whatever you want. I chose example one. So we'll go ahead and enter that, and then click OK. And then now, what you'll see is the RTX application wizard start. So here is going to give you a way to create kind of a template for you to get started. So we'll go ahead and click Next. And you'll see here are the defaults. For the first one, we'll leave it alone. We want an RTX application. We're not going to add TCP IP support. We don't need it here, so we'll leave that unchecked. Here's what type of string convention. We'll go ahead and leave it for Unicode. But here in the final part, we'll want to change this. So we want to add C runtime support for standard things like printfs, for example. So we'll go ahead and change that to multi-threaded C runtime support. And then we'll click Next. And then here is the final step is where you can add some sample code. So in our case, we'll want to create a program framework. So this will give you some starter header files and source files to really get you started. For those of you more advanced, you don't have to include that. You can just write code or write from a, a standard new screen. So we'll go ahead and check program framework, and it gives you some options here. And in our case, we want to create a periodic timer. So we'll go ahead and check that. So once that's done, we'll click Finish. And now Visual Studio will come back up. And here's the code that was generated from the RTX application wizard. You can see here, here's our sample code. And then here is the code that was generated. You can see this file was generated using the RTX application wizard. So now let's go ahead and edit this code and get ready for our build. So here we are in Visual Studio, and here's our example one project. And remember, this project was created from the RTX application wizard. So let's go ahead and zoom in, and we're going to scroll down a bit. And here in this area, this is the RTX periodic timer code. So if you see here the default 500 microseconds. So remember, the HAL timer period was set up for 100 microseconds. So we're going to go ahead and set this up to be exactly that, 100 microseconds. We change the comments, and here's the actual value. So we put 1,000 here. And the reason why it's 1,000 is because the HAL timer period is in terms of 100 nanoseconds. So the easiest way to look at this is remove one of the zeros, and here is 100 microseconds. OK, so we made that change. And let's scroll down a little bit here, and here where you see the area, your program code here, we're going to insert a sleep function. And the reason why we're going to put this sleep function is in is just to delay the application so the timer will run for a while. So here we put in a five second sleep. And then let's move to the functions.c file. So if we go into here, here at the top, we're just going to paste in some global variables. So these global variables will just help to do things, for example, like getting our clock values, which I'll talk about in a minute, getting the delta between them, and then some initialization. So let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit, and we'll insert our application code. So here is the timer handler. So I just pasted some code in here, and let me explain what this is. So here is a large integer type, and we're going to call it time. This is an RTX function called RT get clock time. So this gets the high resolution timer value using clock 2, which is a high resolution timer, and we're going to store it to the value time, the structure we created. Okay? And if you look right underneath it, all we're doing here is finding the time difference. So time delta just equals the current time minus the previous time 
and here's where we're storing the previous time. And then right underneath here, all we're doing right here is removing that extra zero, remember, so that we can put our printouts in terms of microseconds. And then down here, this primer value just sets up the print condition so that we'll ignore the print the first time through because we're initializing the previous time variable. Okay, so that's it. So we went ahead and inserted this code in, and now let's go back to build. So we're going to build the solution. Now we're actually going to debug. So I hit function 5, and now you saw some output come out. So I should explain what this new window is. So this RTX server, all this is, is the standard out window for RTX. So I know Windows has its own output window for all the printfs. RTX uses the RTX server window to show you all of the RTX-based printfs. So if you look here, scroll around a bit, you'll see here's all my printfs. And you'll see the time outputting at essentially very deterministically, 100 microseconds. You know, sometimes you see maybe a deviation by one microsecond, but it's still extremely deterministic. So very, very consistent. So here again is my printouts. And let's go back to our code. So one of the great things about developing and debugging with Visual Studio is you can debug very easily. So here I set a breakpoint, and I just clicked in the margin there. And you can easily set multiple breakpoints. So this is a real-time timer application just using Visual Studio for debugging. So again, here we're going to run to the first breakpoint, and let's clear out our output window here. And let's just step a couple times. So hit function 5 a couple times here. And you see I'm stepping between the breakpoints, and now you're starting to see some output here. And this is great, but of course, this is not 100 microsecond ticks anymore. I'm manually stepping to the code, and that's why you see the time delta is so large. Okay, But the great thing is, is we're able to step through the code the same way as we would when developing like a Windows application. But also what's powerful is being able to add something like simple like a watch window. So here I added a, a variable to the watch window. So and then I started stepping and here you'll see the output coming out. Okay, so again, very powerful, very familiar, hopefully, to many of you. You know, again, one of the great things about RTX is being able to leverage Visual Studio as a world-class IDE for real-time development. So as you've just seen, it's quite straightforward and very familiar to you as how to build and debug an RTX application. So in the next video, we're going to build upon this, and we're going to put together a more complicated timer example, and we will actually connect to the outside world and verify the timer interrupts using an oscilloscope. So hopefully you'll continue with us and see you in a bit.